it's a crisp fall day here in Colorado so getting all my gear out cleaning it up for the uh, for the winter this is my guide gear that I use to guide backpack trips in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park uh, but since I have it out thought I'd shoot a video and in today's video I'm gonna cover seven mods for the Lanshan style tents uh, that you may not have thought of just a quick disclaimer I'm not in any way sponsored by any of the products or mods mentioned in this video. I purchased them with all my own money uh, to make this video for you. It's really up to you if you want to like this video, subscribe to this channel, or ring a bell to be notified in the future. But I do have one request for you. If you dislike this video, click it again, just to be sure. The first mod has to do with proper pitch. I like to have my pitch to be about four, maybe five inches off the ground in good summer weather. And if it's going to rain, I might adjust the height of the pole just a little bit lower so that I can get a, a lower set on the, on the overall tent. But this gives good ventilation throughout the entire tent at night so you don't get as much condensation and protects you from the occasional rain. Now, if you have a driving rain, I would say get that tent pitch a little lower. Here on the Lanshan 2, I have the tent pitch set a little lower. It's only about a couple inches off the ground. I still like to have my vestibules a little higher. That provides good ventilation when, it, when I do have a lower set on the ground. See how it's low on the edge here? and higher here, and I can still adjust that to be lower if the rain is piling in on me. The second mod is to ensure the bathtub floor is truly a bathtub, and this edge here is not sagging down. How do I solve that? I just affixed with a simple overhand knot some bungee cord and I attached it to a section on my uh, trucking pole. And that just lifts this piece up here so it doesn't sag down. Uh, what this really does is help prevent a little rain splash from getting in and most definitely helps keep dirt and excess sand and grime out of your tent. The next mod helps with hanging things in your tent like lights, or maybe some gloves that you want to dry out. But in the Lanshan 2, you have these little clips on both edges. What I've done is just taken a piece of paracord, not even stretch paracord, and strung a section to fit it perfectly without being too tight all the way across between these two uh, tie clips. And you can see I put a loop in the middle where I can just hang my light. Now your loop may need to be bigger to accommodate a headlamp or something of that nature, but my light has a little clip on it that I can do uh, clip it in right there. So that's what it looks like. And I just leave this permanently in here. This next mod you may have seen in some other YouTube videos. So it's not necessarily new, but it's how I do it. It might be a little bit different. In some videos, you've seen where people have taken poles or sticks that they found in their campsite to pull this out to make a few more inches of headroom on the inside of your tent. Well, what I've done is I've taken here on the Lanshan 2, I've taken some old aluminum sections from a backpacking tent that where the aluminum poles have broken and I just kept the sections and I make this little prop stick with an arrow notch in it. And I've done really nothing to the other end. But when we apply it, bring it back as far as I'd like, and tension keeps that stick in the ground, even in high wind, and helps pull out the side of your tent to give you a few extra inches of headroom on either end of your tent. On a Lanshan 2, I just used two of these. 
on a Lanshan 1. I may use them on the end, but I always find that this is sufficient uh, pull out, gives me enough head space in a Lanshan 1. But I do like that side space, so I'll use a, a singular uh, kind of a prop pull to bring out that uh, side of the tent a little further. The next mod has to do with keeping your tent flaps secure yet flexible in case you have a big outpouring of rain or uh, wind that adds a little bit of extra shock. These are actually bungee, these green sections here. It's really easy to undo this, roll it up and just get into your tent. The next mod is using Tyvek for the ground sheet. I wouldn't use anything else. Here you can see I have it marked. This is my Lanshan Pro single wall. And I have a little grommet that my hiking pole goes into. And I've marked it left and right so I know exactly how to throw that ground sheet down in case I need to do a quick pitch. But I've also put grommets on the end and reinforced them with a little extra Tyvek overlapping and just put a piece of shock cord out to the stake. I do that in all four corners and on the back edge, back long edge I should say, right here. And that ground sheet will always center perfectly under your tent. And the last tip is just pack a few extra stakes that can accommodate different soil types. It's hard to put a stake like this or this into sandy soil, but something like this would hold better in sandy soil. Likewise, it's hard to put this into rocky soil. This works a lot easier. My go-to stake is an MSR Groundhog, but I'll take two or three of each of these. Getting extra purchasing power with these Lanshan tents particularly in your guy outs and your stake outs is critically important to getting a tight pitch. If your stakes are loose or going to pull out, you'll never get a good pitch on a land champ. Well, it got pretty windy out there, so I thought I'd bring it inside to share with you five more bonus tips regarding the land champ style tents that you may not have thought of. Bonus tip number one. Don't forget to seam seal on the inside of the tent too. It's an extra layer of protection during snow or sleet or prolonged rain. There are plenty of great YouTube videos out there detailing how to properly seam seal tents like the Lanshan. I prefer the methods to dilute high quality 100% silicone sealant with naphtha to make a brushable liquid the consistency of heavy cream. Then brush it on the areas that require sealing. That's really all there is to it. Bonus tip number two, beef up your repair kit. These are hard lessons learned from being a backcountry guide. I've had to repair a lot of gear. First thing I pack is clear, tenacious tape. I call it the do-all repair tape. I've repaired down jackets, rain jackets, tents, sleeping bags, you name it. This tape can do it all. I bring an extra guy line. Who hasn't tripped on a tent guy line and even snapped it? In this case, this guy line has some reflective material in it, so I can see it at night. And while we're at it, bring an extra guy line tensioner or two. Especially if you have plastic tensioners, which tend to fail quickly or even break in cold weather. I prefer the rabbit ear style tensioner. It's easy to grab onto when your fingers are cold or if you have gloves on. And if you've lost that repair patch that came with the Lanshan tent, a great substitute is the Sil Nylon Patches by GearAid. Bonus tip number three, pack a small microfiber towel. I use it to wipe off condensation in my single wall tents. And just before you pack up your tent to go on to your next location, use it to collect up the debris and dust, pine needles, sand, whatever that gets inside your tent. You can't prevent that from happening, but you sure can clean it up with a microfiber towel. Bonus tip number four, pre-stretch the tent thoroughly by soaking it 
and drying it three times, pulling out the tensioners slightly more each time. Tents made of sil nylon, like the Lanshan style tent, will stretch more than sil poly tents. This will help reduce the stretch when in use. It helps reduce that annoying rain fly wind flap noise that wakes you in the middle of the night. It also gives you an added bonus of helping you get a really tight pitch nearly every time. Bonus tip number five, keep those bugs away. Spray the mesh liner with permethrin. It will help keep small bugs and mosquitoes away. It dries odorless, won't mark, won't stain the fabric. It will last nearly all camping season. The bugs will let you know when it's wearing off and you need to reapply it again. It's proven to work even in Canada and Alaska where black flies and mosquitoes will literally pick you up and carry you away. And don't forget to spray around the top vent too, anywhere where bugs congregate. If you've decided to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video, use the links in the description below. The small commission received helps this channel and is at no additional cost to you. And if you have some additional mods and tips, put them in the comments below. I'm sure others would like to know all about them. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.